to Fox News. At Brad's first trial, Butler testified, quote, I have never been in the world a snitch. Then in the summer of 1996, Fox 11 News obtained documents from the district attorney's own internal files, index cards identifying Julius Julio Butler as a confidential informant. Well, based on this evidence that we should move ahead, that the jurors would have. Boy, they took us, didn't they? If I would have known what I know now, he never would have been convicted. On the day of Pratt's release from prison, Butler resigned from the board of L.A.'s prominent First AME Church and released a statement saying, I don't want to cause any further harm or pain to my church family. No bitterness toward Julius Butler? Mm -mm, no way. Anything you'd want to say to him? Well, I wish him well and hope that uh, he uh, will come to himself and uh, speak the truth about how he worked with these people with COINTELPRO to do not only <clears throat> these, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Olsen thing, but so many other things that affected so many other lives. Elmer Geronimo Pratt and years to freedom. Elmer Geronimo Pratt enjoying the sights of freedom. I didn't see uh, a day of grass for eight straight years. All I saw was concrete and steel. So just looking at a tree makes my knees weak. As he returns to his family's home in Marin City, California, he talks about his long years behind bars. Should be a state of emergency declared in this country. By what they're, put, by what they're doing, expecting to dead wrong people in these penitentiaries. Obviously, Pratt doesn't think he's the only person to go through such a long prison ordeal. The Reverend Jim McCloskey has helped fight for Pratt's freedom and the release of others believed to be imprisoned unfairly. Myra Ming now tells who McCloskey thinks really committed the tennis court murder. The two people who we think are the real killers of Mrs. Olson are Larry Hatter and Herbert Swilly. Swilly and Hatter are both dead. Swilly, allegedly a stick-up artist, was shot after a card game in 1972. In fact, these are morgue photographs. And in a strange twist, Hatter was found dead on a tennis court in Santa Monica. He impaled himself on a steel rod during an attempted burglary. Four men who grew up in South L.A. with Swilly and Hatter say the two confessed the murder to them. In this declaration, one man claims that he told Los Angeles police, but the detectives, quote, told me not to discuss this with anyone if I knew what was good for me, unquote. Three of the men also claim that Swilly and Hatter were friends of Julius Butler, the key prosecution witness against Pratt. These are police composites of the killers, based on descriptions from the dead woman's wounded husband and a witness who saw the robbers running away. Take another look at the pictures of Swilly and Hatter. Pratt's defenders say the resemblance is stunning. You see their pictures next to Identikit and you say, God, these are the guys. But Orange County Superior Court Judge Everett Dickey didn't decide to overturn Pratt's conviction because of McCloskey's theory about Swilly and Hatter. The judge's decision turned on star witness Julius Butler and the suppressed evidence that he was a government informant. And so on June 10, 1997, Pratt had his chance to stand before the judge and ask for release on bail. And you can rest assured that I will adhere to every order and every instruction that this court uh, indicates for me to follow. And that's my word as a Vietnam vet and as a man. They will be set at $25,000. I feel like I'm going to scream and shout into old happy days. I, I just feel great. He's a wonderful man. And he's dedicated. And we have children. And um, he's really the one who's got to do it. When you walked through that jail door and out into freedom, what went through your mind? Uh, this can't be real. Somebody will come get me. <laughs> I'm going to hear a whistle blow say, wait a minute. That one was going through my mind. I was looking. I said, wait. And, and then I saw all of the people. After an incredibly exhaustive investigation, one that, that I personally undertook, there is no evidence that's been brought to my attention that convinces me in any way as to the innocence of Mr. Pratt. The DA still has the option to retry Pratt, but first will appeal the overturned conviction. No comment from the DA's office for this report, nor from the LAPD and FBI. For now, just the words of a man who spent 27 years in prison insisting he is innocent. Bitter sweet.
bitter because of all the pain and the suffering, but sweet because I made a family. <laughs> that day I was to show me real shit. And a granddaughter. I mean, you know, that's that's the sweetness of it, but the, that was few and far between. But the bitterness overwhelmed was uh, over, more overwhelming than anything. And now, the challenge of learning about life in the 90s after being behind bars since he was 22 years old, even putting on a seatbelt, is a new adventure. Okay, I get it. I learned. <laughs> Elmer Geronimo Pratt, 27 years to freedom. For the past four years, Fox 11 News has investigated the Pratt case and raised some serious questions about his conviction. We'll continue to follow this story as Pratt fights to stay free. I'm Christine Devine.